You're listening to Forward Faster, bite-sized insights for entrepreneurs. Startups face many challenges when it comes to getting their business off the ground, Um, and that can lead to a lot of stress and anxiety, Uh, but techniques such as awareness and self-compassion and mindfulness can really help. Um, I'm here with Sabrina Vogler, and she is a professional who teaches these techniques to people, including um, some of the startups in our incubator here. Um, So Sabrina, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So let's start off with why is mindfulness so important? That is a great question. So sometimes I think that story best tells the truth of our lives. And if we think about the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, she stumbles on this cottage and she tries out all their chairs and all their beds and these three different bowls of porridge, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of as the story unfolds, she's recognizing that one bowl of porridge is too hot, one bowl of porridge is too cold, one bowl of porridge is just right. And mindfulness is important because mindfulness teaches us how in any given moment to ask ourselves, how is this moment landing for me? Is it stressing me out? And if it is, how can I start to build some skillfulness around what exactly is stressing me out? How is my body responding to that stress? How can I start to rebalance my body chemistry? to um, feeling more calm, more anchored, more grounded, and then how can I give myself permission if this particular bowl of porridge, whatever that is, is too hot, to put the spoon down to let it cool off and to start to really be nourished in the way that I need to be nourished to keep going. Wow, that's a really accessible analogy. I appreciate that a lot. Um, so talk to me about some of the benefits, you know, physically, psychologically, um, relationship-wise. What are the benefits of practicing mindfulness? Mm-hmm. So mindfulness has actually been well-studied since the late 70s. The very first study, uh, mindfulness techniques were taught to a room full of people who had pain that could not respond to any medications. Hmm. And after learning a few simple techniques and practicing them over eight weeks, this uh, group of people said that their pain got between 40 and 60 percent improved. So since that study, we've really looked at from every different aspect of life, from pain in the body, from illness in the body, cancer, um, to emotional pain, uh, anxiety, stress, depression, grief, Um, to relationships, pretty much every aspect has been studied from an angle of when we teach ourselves to suss out in any given moment, what am I experiencing and what do I need and how can I start to access um, that which is life-giving for me, it it spills over into every different component of our our life. So whether that's, you know, on the job, which is Mm -hmm. a lot of how we spend our time or as parents, as caregivers, in relationship as partners, et cetera. Great. So you mentioned in these studies people practicing techniques. So Mm -hmm. if you could share with me some specific techniques, maybe something that someone who's brand new to it could get started with or um, other deeper practices. Sure. So probably the most profound uh, way that we can start accessing inner calm is by recognizing that we actually have our own reset button, much like our cell phones or our computers. (laughs) And that reset button is housed in the power of our breath, both in teaching ourselves how to breathe deeply and how to focus on inhaling versus exhaling, whatever it is that we need. So, uh, So practices tend to begin around teaching ourselves to take a deep breath, a long, slow exhale, teaching ourselves how to ground by noticing if I'm walking, where are my feet making contact with the ground? If I'm sitting, where is my body meeting the chair? And then from that new habit of teaching ourselves to center and ground, we, we build habits of curiosity around asking ourselves certain questions that lead us to unlocking whatever it is that we need in that moment. Great. So maybe you could explain to me a little bit about how um, using tools like this can help us shift from a place of anxiety to feeling better. And in terms of business, you know, um, startups, entrepreneurs, how that can help shift from anxiety to higher performance. So this is the ultimate question, right? Mm-hmm. And and as a mindfulness coach in private practice, all the time people find me because of anxiety. Mm. And In my own work, I have discovered that anxiety is based on a relationship within ourselves with the part of us that is anxious. And so 
when we work with our anxiety, we start to discover there's another part of us that can respond to the anxious part of ourself in a skillful way, in a way that says, what is underneath this anxiety? And how can I start to hear and see myself in a new way rather than rejecting the anxious part of me, um, helping the anxious part of me to access what we need? So in essence, when we talk about high performance as entrepreneurs, as um, leaders of startups, mm -hmm. high performance, Brendan Burchard, he's an executive coach who has done the largest landmark study, international study on high performance, concludes high performance is about being able to create the conditions within ourself for internal well-being that spill over into external success that is sustainable over time. Those are kind of the three different elements of high performance. So mindfulness is all about starting to access what does well-being look like for me mm -hmm. specifically? Specifically, and based on that, um, what habits can I start to create? Because as it turns out, our brains love to switch things up. Our brains love to to build new ways of seeing and understanding the world. So what habits can start giving me some life in this moment, which will automatically spill over into an increased ability to maintain my intention? my attention and my intention in any given moment. And so uh, so high performance kind of centers around our ability to self-regulate ourselves from a place of consciousness and being able to think first um, before we show up. Mm -hmm. so, so in the realm of leadership, you can only imagine how powerful it is Mindfulness allows us to, again, have a sense of those three bowls of porridge in front of us and saying, this is actually the one that serves me the most as I give myself permission to access it. I am inspired and I'm able to, to offer this overflowing resource to the people of whom I am in charge of. Great. Sabrina, you're not new to NextCore. You've mm -hmm. been here and you've been um, leading some workshops with startups in our Illuminate program. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what has the response been like with some of these startups? So as I've worked with the startups here at Illuminate, what I have discovered is their response is one of surprise. At the ease that it's really not that hard to start to ask ourselves in any given moment, how is this moment landing for me? And then if the moment is landing in a way that is challenging or stressful, how to start accessing our own inner haven of calm. So I would say the response has been an eagerness to engage in uh, these new habits and, and a recognition of how applicable it can be to, um, to train ourselves new ways to both look at how this moment is landing as well as how we respond. Great. And I know that the startups here are very thrilled to have you and happy Thank to you. round out the curriculum with a mindfulness course. They're surprised that we offer it, but very glad that we do. Um, so for entrepreneurs who are listening, um, who aren't part of our, our programs, what advice would you give them? I would say more than anything to recognize that it is never too late to take a look at our habits and to ask are the habits in my life serving me? And if not, I can change them up. I can create life-giving habits of curiosity, which in turn is going to fuel my creativity, my ability to innovate, my ability to sustain feedback in a way that doesn't leave me decimated after the conversation. So, so it would be that. It would be it's never too late to cultivate life-giving habits. Great. What inspires you every day, Sabrina? Maybe what inspired you to get started with mindfulness and what inspires you today? So I began my practice 25 years ago as a medical social worker, and I worked for a number of years in hospice with the dying. And that was my inspiration, is recognizing that life is incredibly profoundly short and fleeting and fragile and therefore so, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so what inspires me more than anything is recognizing that in any given moment we can, um, as Viktor Frankl would say, even if we can't change our situation, we can change ourselves and recognizing this new breath begins right here, right now, and everything restarts. 
So speaking of inspiring, I have to say my mother-in-law, and perhaps she'll listen to this one day, Rachel Leonard, she teaches mindfulness and meditation, um, and she has been very inspiring to me um, in terms of what you were just saying, um, particularly living more in the moment, being more aware, um, Mm -hmm. and it has helped instill a sense of calm in me. Um, she gave me the book Altered Traits. She has a whole library of books on mindfulness and meditation. Mm -hmm. Altered Traits is all about how practicing meditation and mindfulness actually changes the brain. Um, Wondering if you have any book recommendations of your own that you would share. Mm -hmm. So that's a great question. I'm an avid reader and always gulping up the next book. Um, There are so many incredible books um, John Kabat-Zinn's Full Catastrophe Living was kind of one of the first books on the scene that taught us that we could change our relationship to stress. Self-Compassion is authored by a woman who I trained under named Dr. Kristen Neff. Um, she is a researcher who has spent her whole life devoted to studying our relationship with ourselves and how we can access a more powerful life. So those are probably the two that I would name. And I would also say, you know, there's so many wonderful phone apps now, Insight Timer, Calm, Headspace. I've tried Headspace. Sure, yeah. Yeah. That can, you know, really allow us to, on the spot at any given moment, um, pause, take a breath, shift our mindset, redirect our attention, and then start fresh again. Wonderful. On this podcast, we like to look to the future and ask um, our guests what they think will be the the state of their particular um, field of practice. So if you were to fast forward 10 years, what do you hope to see in terms of people practicing mindfulness, meditation? So I have witnessed uh, since I started practicing mindfulness in 1999, an explosion of research and infiltration of mindfulness in the workplace, in the prison systems, in in schools, in healthcare, and I would say that my aspiration or my hope would be that um, starting at a very early age, that we would we would continue teaching our children that they have the power in any given moment to regulate themselves and to really start living the life that they want to live and finding the courage to access the resources that they need. And then courage is contagious. Mm-hmm. And so so it would be my hope that over the next decade, there would be an ongoing aha, an ongoing realization of um, just how powerful we can become uh, in, again, ways that might seem surprisingly simple. Wonderful. Great. Thank you so much, Sabrina, for joining us. Everyone, if you'd like to learn more about Sabrina, you can visit her website, Mm heartinthemoment.com. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.